States of Wordlessness, exploring neurodivergent space through creative practice. Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for joining tonight's event. My name is Livy Murdoch and I work on the Learning, Digital and Events Programme at Autograph Gallery and it has been my pleasure to work with the artists who will be presenting tonight. Before I hand over to them, I just wanted to run through the order of the event. So tonight's event will run for an hour and 25 minutes in total. Each of the three artists will be presenting for 25 minutes and we will have two five minute breaks between presentations. We do have captions for this event. If you'd like to use those, you can find them by clicking the CC button in the bottom right hand corner of the video. Myself and the artists are joining you live and you can find us in the chat box, which is just on screen beside this video. We would love it if you wanted to use that space to share any thoughts or reflections with us in chat form. In order to use the chat, however, you will need to be signed in to a YouTube or Google account. We've also created something called a Jamboard, which is a free resource. You don't need any sort of account to use that. You are invited to explore and use the Jamboard however you feel. It can be deployed as a stim space, a doodle space, or in any way you like really. The link to that Jamboard was included in the same Eventbrite email that provided the link for you to get to this YouTube page. We will also share the link again now in the chat. So tonight we are considering the question, what is neurodivergent space? Neurodivergent space is unique to each neurodivergent person. It is distinct from neurotypical experience, but it cannot be described. The neuroverse must be experienced. And tonight we have three artists who will be sharing their experience of the neuroverse as captured through their creative practices. Presenting first will be Sonia Bue, a multiform neurodivergent artist. She is also a writer on autism and art and a consultant for neurodiversity in the arts. She has a significant archive of post-memory work and her current focus is neuroinclusive, practice-led research. Presenting second is Sonia Zelik, a visual artist and filmmaker working across a range of media, including installation, audio, video, and non-fiction creative writing. Her practice is informed by her experience of situational mutism. Sonia's work explores the complexity of communication and our relationship with the physical, social, and emotional environment. Finally, presenting third, we have Lucy Barker. Lucy is a Bradford-based interdisciplinary artist who has been working in arts, community and research contexts for over 20 years now. She works across a broad spectrum of art forms, often exploring themes such as ritual, nature and hybridity. So now I'll hand you over to Sonia Bue. We are the Gravitation One-to-One -one Collective. We are artists. We are neurodivergent. We are a trio. We are a collective. We work one-to-one. -one. We work remotely. We work neurodivergently. States of wordlessness. Exploring Neurodivergent Space Through Creative Practice. Sonia Bue explains. I created my film for this event because I wanted to invite you into my space, in my studio, and I wanted to demonstrate all the different ways in which I document my work and how that's part of my process. And that there's a sort of continual looping back and going over and over the same imagery and capturing details and sort of zooming in to the work and, and that reflecting my focus but also the noticing the objects and features within an environment like, like my studio. So that really 
I'm giving equal status to, for example, the wall sockets, which I find fascinating because they tell you so much about the history of the of the building. They're from obviously from different eras. And my studio used to be a lampshade factory. And um, I just really love the idea of um, the materiality of the space and, and what might have happened in that room before I was there. You know, it's like these features that I'm picking out or photographing, it's like they, they're characters, you know, and you may have noticed them or not in the, in the film that I created, the short film that's contained within this film. But that was a very controlled floorscape view of the performance. And really what I wanted to do was kind of give people an insight into above the ground um, and, and what was happening during, uh, before, during and after the performance and how, how the work kind of keeps on rippling. Um, yeah. And how that is reflective of what I feel neurodivergent space can be or what it is for me and um, that this really this event is an exploration and not a not a not a a description of neurodivergent space it's not a, de a definition we're not attempting to seal off the subject you know done and dusted we're we're trying to open it up um, and the sort of defining feature, really, that I've wanted to draw out from our collective is this idea of wordlessness and states of wordlessness, which I find so, so powerful in my life. I spend a lot of my time in my head. Um, and my thoughts and processes are so complex um, that it's very hard to surface and find language sometimes. But it's not just about overwhelm or a difficulty. It's actually about being in a space which is powerful and so rich. Um, on a sensory level that it can't really be put into words. And I think that's where some of us get trapped. We get trapped in this sort of space where we're doing so much and we're creating, we're creating wonders, but we can't necessarily frame it or in the way that can be recognized by the neurotypical world. So that's that's really what I wanted to say. Really, the focus is wordlessness for me, um, trying to give a platform to situational mutism, which is a neurodivergent profile that has not come to prominence, uh, we're, we're trying to put that right, uh, give it a platform and, and make it part of the conversation about neurodivergence. Situational mutism is extraordinarily challenging in the arts because so much is predicated on being able to talk about our work in public forums, in meetings, in gatherings, to pitch ideas in all sorts of ways. Uh, the spoken word is given dominance and it's a form of oppression for some. And so we really would like to highlight that and get it more known about.
The artist is not present. Two, states of wordlessness, exploring neurodivergent space through creative practice. A film for autograph, revisiting Sonia Bue's live stream collage performance on the 2nd of July, 2022. An Instagram live was streamed from her studio to the site gallery. Originally commissioned by Dash for the Ampersand award-winning event, We Are Invisible, We Are Visible, marking the 102nd anniversary of the first Dada International Festival in Berlin. Bua's creative process is presented through multiple lenses over a period of nine months. Footage includes a film short, which has been screened at Sight Gallery and Tate Liverpool.
Camera, Naomi Morris and Sonia Bue. Location, Magdalen Road Studios, Oxford. All rights, copyright, Sonia Bue, 2023.
an invitation to speak. Introducing Sensory Philosophy, Exploring the Margins of Speech and Silence, Situational Mutism, aka Selective Mutism, and Access in the Arts. This is a document I have created with an AN bursary and will be shared via autograph. My experience of situational mutism has led me to question the way our society is based on the assumption of universal access to language and speech. Being made to communicate in neurotypical ways is disabling for many and these unspoken assumptions are never questioned. My arts practice is a space to express thoughts, information and experiences visually, poetically, philosophically, sensorily, metaphorically and indirectly and without the pressure to speak and translate into accepted neurotypical ways of communicating. Processing and making sense of the world using loops, repetition, textures, touch, shadows and light. Reprocessing images and sound, making non-linear stories. Created neurodivergently, supported by bursary from AN, the artist's information company, at AN underscore art news. Series. 16mm film projection, installation, silent. New Contemporaries, Tea Factory, Liverpool, Camden Arts Centre, London, Hatton Gallery, Newcastle. A Dream of a Safe Place, Voice, Audio and Text. There is a gentle breeze and the faint sound of sea in the distance. Waking, half opening her eyes, mist diffuses the light blurring the horizon. She is 2100 miles from home. In a soft grey sky, birds of many species crisscross overhead. Among them, large white birds glide effortlessly on the breeze, as if in slow motion, above the sea and the land. Long wings outstretched, she turns into the wind, feeling it lift her, climbing upwards. Her wings lock into the outstretched position. As the wind flows over and under the taut camber of her wings, feathers quiver along their trailing edge, where the updraft and downdraft air flows meet. Birds, seabirds, appear out of the mist, landing around her, hearing the swish of their wings through the air, a wing almost brushing her face as one of them flies nearby. Looking up next to her, as if on guard and offering protection, is a huge bird, an enormous still and calming presence. Her breast feathers blow in the breeze as she gazes intently out to sea. She has never felt so safe, calm and protected and such a sense of belonging. Turning away from the wind propels her forward, tilting her body sideways, gravity takes her downwards to the water, the tip of her wing leaving a brief trace on its surface, the other 
pointed upward to the sky. Close to the water, she levels her body, skimming the waves, sailing the breeze, using it to take her up again. She wants to stay here, in this place, close to this being, but knows she has to leave, and makes a conscious effort to tear herself away. Long wings outstretched, she turns into the wind, feeling it lift her, climbing upwards. For hundreds of miles, rarely close to land, using the sun and the stars, her sensitive sense of smell, and an internal magnetic compass to navigate the ever-shifting oceans. She flies another 730 non-stop miles in 30 hours. Gliding the wind enables her to cover vast distances using little energy. Her heartbeat slows right down and she half sleeps for great parts of her journey embedded in the wind. She wakes imbued with the same deep sense of calm, protection and belonging that she experienced in the dream and with an overwhelming longing to return, to be close to these beings again. Long wings outstretched, she turns into the wind, feeling it lift her, climbing upwards. As the wind flows over and under the taut camber of her wings, feathers quiver along their trailing edge. A Dream of a Safe Place was a collaboration with United Visual Artists on Beholder, a virtual reality work commissioned by Birmingham Open Media Lab, supported by Arts Council England and Digital Catapult 2018. The next film is about my dad's journey as a boy from the former Yugoslavia to wartime Germany as a conscripted worker, then to a post-war UK where he worked as a tailor, experiencing one war at its axis and the next at a safe distance. The film is made from fragments of old videotapes of programmes he recorded from the TV, holiday, home videos and material created during the course of my art practice. This shorter version of my original film was made for the Astoria Film Festival, New York, 2019. Montazza, Montage, The Natural World A video portrait of a man born in a country that no longer exists. Hundreds of thousands, not only tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. I mean, if, if you take as a whole the foreign workers that were in, in Germany, I mean, there, there were millions of them. Mm. There were so many hundreds of thousands French people, mm. Dutch people, uh, Spanish, mm. there were Spanish there as well. Imagine a country where you can still find ancient towns run by a crystal clear sea. Yugoslavia is a country with a long turbulent history. After World War II, it became a socialist federation made up of six republics and two autonomous regions. It speaks five official languages and prays to an Eastern Orthodox, Catholic and Muslim God. This is no imaginary land. This is Yugoslavia.
A double-layered filter, no thicker than a human hair, traps organisms of different sizes. Viewed through a scanning electron microscope, the sample takes on a new dimension. Magnified many thousands of times, it begins to reveal traces of other organisms. The power is increased. The focus narrows. spacesuits, you're really in space. There are no boundaries to what you're seeing. It's like having a goldfish bowl over your head, which gives you unlimited visibility. And then the portable life support system is just very, very quiet. You know, there's a water pump in it that's circulating water through your underwear, you know, cooling water. And there's a fan that's pumping the oxygen through, but they're very quiet. You can't hear them at all. It's as if you're out there without anything on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Houston. Sort of total, complete silence and that beautiful view. And the realization, of course, that you're going 25,000 miles an hour. recognize that you're not there because you deserve to be there. You, know, you were just lucky. You're the representative of humanity at that point in history, having that experience in a sense for the rest of, of mankind. The flight director says get back in. There were no jobs when a German occupied Yugoslavia. 1940, uh, Yugoslavia capitulated. He disbanded, I uh, think. People didn't have uh, jobs to, to, to get the money in. So how to, could they order the suits or the coats? They were wearing that what, what, what I had. Not 1940, yeah. And then, uh, uh, as it was, like, like it's over here, the uh, Council of Glamorgan or something mm. like that. They put put out a declaration that the all young young people should report to the to the office, and there is a jobs in Germany for us. So you what 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 you do? You gradually realize that that you're weightless and everything is floating. The fluids start shifting into the, your head, and you feel like your head's filling up with blood, and you just have to get used to it. And eventually, the the fluid will equilibrate, and, and you'll feel very comfortable. Ask you that you, you, you age, and I will put it for physical examination. I mean, if you're healthy enough, they take it. Well, I mean, what could he say? He was quite quite happy that I was able to get a job. There was a special train that was organized by the Germans. The train was waiting there for us. Get into the train and they shift us to, to, to Germany. The train was filled up maybe with, with thousand people. All the young fellas now. Most of the young people. Children almost not. Some older, much older. 
Well, I was 16. That's how I went to, to, to Germany with lots of thousands of others. And we were di directed by train to, to Hamburg. Right at the last minute, there was a, a psychological block in there that said, don't, don't count on this so heavily. It might not happen. This is such a big thing. I, I frankly don't see how you can do it. Even when participating in it, I think it's audacious that you would try. I clearly could never understand, uh, as a crewman, how to, how to make it work. I mean, they, they took foreign workers from, from all over the place. France, from Poland, from, from Greece, from, from Yugoslavia. Even it, Italian, they, they, they were there. Nothing, except what I had on. I had a, a certain thing for just, uh, I must have been a boiled egg on the yeah. cheese, on the bread, a little bit of salami in a, in a cloth bag, like, you know? When we went to Yugoslavia, they supposed to be in uh, uh, my relationship. Never recognized anybody. And they said uh, my stepbrother died. My sister doesn't, she doesn't, they don't know where, where she is. So we crossed the hill. I felt, yeah, she's been here before. Because it was night time when we arrived. We moved straight away from, from, from the village and drove off to Austria. He was afraid. I, I, I was suspicious of those people who were around me. You thought they would attack him. He walked up to that man in the village. He was really afraid. He backed back. Well, at that time, Tito was there, coming to the village with a car. I mean, they didn't have any cars at that time. Mm. And come, coming back 50 years later. Well, because you hear all kinds of stuff around, no? that the people are disappearing, no? So, you're bound to be afraid, huh? No? I have no roots over there anymore, so... By a crystal clear sea. And I have no longing to go back. I mean, I know more people in Germany than what I know in Yugoslavia, yeah, no? Yeah. That will pass out of communications range over the backside of the moon. On approach, the spacecraft uh, sort of dives towards and behind the moon. It was a totally different moon than any moon uh, I had ever seen before. It was in this eerie shadow, no motion, utterly silent, and sort of gave one a feeling of foreboding. It didn't seem like a very friendly or welcoming place. nešta i istinitih snimaka, ali da je to sve s jednom, jednom tehnikom moguće, moguće učiniti. Odjednom su rekli da je to čisto uh, montaža sa kojom se želi srušiti hrvatska vlada. Smo jednu konstrukciju, jedan falsifikat, You've worked so long and so hard, and, and finally you're here. You couldn't get out. You had a fence all the way around, all around the, where, where the factory was standing. So you passed through, 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 the, through the gate where the police was standing, the guard. keep a lettuce in, in that situation. I just mm -hmm. chuck him away then afterwards, yeah. no? Burn him. Well, he was saying that certain fightings near, nearby. And some, <coughs> some people been taken away, being shot. By Germans and by, by, by partisans. By 
five miles per second. That's the speed of these films and tapes as they freefall weightless around the Earth. They contain some of the greatest images ever recorded in space. Because they hold you there for, for two years' time, and then you had to leave for, for two weeks to, to go home, if you wanted to or not. So I decided to go. But reading all those uh, news stories from Yugoslavia, what, what so, many, so much fighting now, they were burning the trains, so they were shooting people mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, especially me coming from, from, from Germany, they were mm -hmm. shot in the street away. And in the paper, and you hear in the story, the people who were coming afterwards. I mean, there were people coming all the time to mm -hmm. Germany. So naturally they bring, brought the story with them. But I didn't go down into Yugoslavia. The cores from Antarctica are a vital link between the past and the present. A film by Sonia Zelich, funded by Arts Council England as part of Neither Use Nor Ornament exhibition, hashtag Nuno Project 2019, Avada Gallery, Oxford, UK. To anyone who has faced the problem of compressing into a linear organisation an idea which was stimulating precisely because it extended into two or three different but not contradictory directions at once. In an anagram, all the elements exist in a simultaneous relationship. Consequently, within it, nothing is first, nothing is last, nothing is future and nothing is past. Nothing is old and nothing is new except perhaps the anagram itself. Maya Deren, filmmaker, an anagram of ideas on art, form and film, 1942-7. to seven.
After recent discoveries, diagnosis and insights around my own neurodivergence, I have spent time revisiting my work with this lens, noting repeating threads and themes. The work shared with you today was made between 2012 and January 2023. Between the Sea and Thee, 2013. Three-room interlinked installation. MA in Contemporary Art Practice, Lancaster Institute of Contemporary Art. Walk in the liminal space between land and sea of the Morecambe Bay coastline. I recorded audio, video and drawings at timed intervals. Exploring the relationship between human body and bodies of water. I considered how the natural land and seascape reflected Arnold van Gennep's The Rites of Passage text, wherein a tripartite sequence in ritual is observed. Separation, transition and incorporation. Each space aimed to create an immersive experience for each of the three themes. Phase one, the breakdown of previously understood hierarchies and structures. Phase two, transformation, potential, peril. Phase three, rebirth, reintegration. Thresholds between each of the three rooms were marked by a line of white light. Audiences were encouraged to move through at their own pace. Each visitor carried a torch in case of disorientation. The final space was one of quiet reflection, offering rest and prompts for consideration. Phase one, the breakdown of previously understood hierarchies and structures. Phase two, transformation, potential, peril. Sound heard in the second space includes the dawn chorus recorded at a bird sanctuary on the Morecambe coastline, slowed to 25% speed. The viewer also hears the sound of an underwater microphone dragged over sand by the lapping tide and the artist's breathing. Interactions with speed, clarity and detail Relationships and process in time are particular to a neurodivergent experience. They are also features of a human life lived as part of the natural world. Phase three, rebirth, reintegration.
Slow Down, 2013, Video Work, Collaboration with Ben NCM. The Times Are Urgent, Let's Slow Down, Bayou Akamalafi. A View with a Room, January 2023, video work. In January 2023, COVID-19 curtailed my plans for an artist residency in Lanzarote and flared symptoms of chronic fatigue. I made this film during my self-isolation by using a second-hand smartphone to film the view from my bedside window at least once a day. It contains fragments from 36 films and is silent up until toward the end, where I have added a field recording from my first walk to the field I could see from my bed. Express. There is only the moment and your expression of it using the means available at the time, no matter what form or language it might take. Process. A tomato project.
There is an invisible world out there and we are living in it. Bill Viola. Thank you for joining us here today.